Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Nerdarchus Ryan, and today I'm joined by... Nerdarchus Dave. Nathan Nerdark. Nerdarchus Ted. And today we're talking about enemies in a full shell, flail snail power. Jump down the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter. It's a great way to learn how to game with Nerdarchy as well as get weekly tips. What page can we find the flail snail on? The flail snail in your trusty Volo's Guide to Monster is on page 144. And if you haven't picked up yours yet, why haven't you? What are you waiting for? What you are gods, you doing? man! Yeah. Down in the description below, you can find a link to Amazon so you can get it through our link, and we would appreciate you helping us. And I've also taken to like pinning it in the comment section, so there's a pinned comment of where to get it to. Flouse now. Now, this is another monster from original Dungeons and Dragons AD and D. The Wayback Machine. The Wayback Machine, and it was probably in the Fiendom Folio. A lot of the monsters that they're pu that they're putting into Volo's Guide came from either the Fiendom Folio or, or Monster Manual Two. You know, like most things that are terrible, I think this came from the Fiendom folio it was always a cool monster now one of the things that they're doing with the, the volos guide the monsters they're taking these old nostalgia monsters that we had way back when and they're actually improving the story and making the rp uh, elements to them way better than they actually originally were mm -hmm. yeah. now i don't remember ever going up against a flail snail i don't know if you used it back in the day against us or not i don't have any memories of it it's because I used them and then mind wiped the party. Uh, yeah, it's, it's the, the players, players the not players. the characters. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So they were they made an appearance in the Spelljammer game, unknowns to us, and we were looking at the gold value of what the shells are worth. We left a lot of fucking money on the table, guys. <laughs> About thirty grand. We are the yeah. worst mur murder hobos ever. Is really what yeah. So happens. basically, I had a kraken that collected uh, flower snails and shoved them into basically boulders mm. and, and had them like in a magical stasis, and then would hurl them catapult style at the ship they would break open they would you know try and blind everybody on the ship and then start to murder people then start flailing and snailing as the flail snail does the flail snail is designed it's got a trail of treasure as it's, its rp thing so there are people who have a career of just following the snails around because their goo that they leave behind hardens into a usable glass you know for for our world like we have the chaos storm hunters but like maybe when there's an off season or whatever they're also like basically they look for eldritch like paraphernalia maybe we make a background for that because that sounds really cool so it's maybe they're not just chasers of the storm but they also might chase some flail snails chaos stormers right mm -hmm. They have rodeos. Yeah. And the flail snail. Yeah. <laughs> they have flail snail instead of steer. Yeah. I, I, just, <laughs> I don't see the, the, the flail snail flailing around. Well, no, no, no. You, it, you get on its shell and it tries to kill you and you try to not die. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But so. <laughs> but, yeah. but the other thought it's, being that maybe with the chaos storms in our world, maybe the residue that they leave isn't just glass, but other things. Mm -hmm. you know, like other substances that mm -hmm. have ultra juices as well. So. Well, I could also see that that glass being ideal for making magic items that are made with glass. Yeah. Mm. So, like, lenses yeah. come to mind, you know, crystal balls come to mind. Telescope, like, if there's a thing that's like a telescope type of thing. Like yeah. spyglass. Spyglass. Yeah, yeah magic just, spyglass that yeah. will work. There's probably definitely some things that you could definitely use it for. And it is kind of cool that, yeah, the idea that they follow, that other races, probably especially subterranean races, will follow these guys around because they, they pretty much just eat everything in their wake and they leave behind this inedible substance that they can't eat so what are they going to do with it but in addition to that like you guys mentioned the shell itself is worth a fortune five thousand gold pieces ladies and gentlemen five thousand i don't know if it was originally f from the elemental plane of earth before uh, you know or was just kind of ma magical uh c creation but now they they've reflavored it they're from the elemental plane of earth kind of makes sense with the fact that they kind of live to devour earthly things and substances pre precious and semi-precious uh, stones and gems and that kind of stuff so kind of cool this these things would be a terrible nuisance for miners I would think, you know... Yeah, when you're under 18, a flail snail is not the thing you want to encounter. <laughs> Probably yeah. not. <laughs> Listen, officer, day, I, I could have sworn day. this flail snail was of age. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so with the flail snail, uh, for miners, they're going to eat your crystals. They're going to basically munch up all the stuff that you would like to take to out. Harvest. And, and yeah, you want to kill these things dead. If you want to yeah. hire adventurers to kill these things <laughs> dead. Or you could be the, the four miners that rose up. Like, that's an opening to an adventure. Like, hunting the flail snail, you have to level up a little bit because a low level party is going to get absolutely murdered for this or maybe you know your miners happen to be gnomes and they're a bit of pranksters and as a lark they like to hire wizards 
to, to deal with our snails now. Probably. Yeah, yeah, that would be hysterical. <laughs> so, uh, looking looking at this, the fact that it's a challenge three, it's it's things that it can do right off the bat are crazy. So, I want to see a party of spellcasters, third or fourth level. Try to take this off. You get murdered by it. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. It's not very fast, so you can probably play keep away. The only problem is the only thing a spellcaster can really do is cast spells at it, uh-huh. and you might start eating your own spells at that point. Which is why I think it would be amusing. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think, you know, if you have a party of warriors, low level, there, this it's still going to be really challenging. They have a good armor class. They get a bunch of attacks. It's thematic in the sense that when you when you can actually kill the tentacles and and take away some of the attacks, but in the meantime, it, it's a pretty it's a substantial threat. Yeah, I mean one and two of um, of just having your your spells like volleyball or you know like tennis racketed back at you is pretty awesome on the anti magic shell. Yep, that's that's fantastic. And then five and six is it just turns converts the spell level into force damage and it's a DC fifteen con save. How many sorcerer or spellcasters are that good at making uh, saves? The sorcerer comes to mind. That's about it, right? Yeah. yeah. So everyone else is going to have a bad time of it. Uh, what's the radius on that? It basically explodes force damage. Yeah. yeah. It, Within it's a thirty foot of the of the creature. Yeah, it becomes a force that. fireball. Yeah, centered on it, but it's probably not taking. And it's a D six damage itself. Force damage per level of the spell. Yeah, it's no, it doesn't take. It does not take the damage itself. It just distributes it, and and basically any time you cast a spell at the flail snail and it it makes its saving throw, which it has advantage on, or you make a spell attack at it, which I believe you have disadvantage to hit with. Yes. If it misses, then you roll to find out. Well, why did it miss? Was it a, you know why did it miss or why did it make its saving throw? And then you determine. Oh, you roll another die six to find out what happened. Ryan mentioned one, two, and five, and six. I think three or four, nothing happens. Yeah, no additional normal. effect. Yeah. But you know, you you have a you have a sixty six percent chance that it's going to damage the people casting the spells and not damage the snail and not damage the snail. <laughs> yeah. Well, so the way the way to deal with this creature is just. Whack it w- with attacks, like Beat just, with a stick. just just attack yeah. it. Like even missile attacks would be. Oh, okay. I, oh yeah, missile attacks. Because if you if you are a spellcaster and you decide to charge in it, you're probably going to have a low armor class, and it's going to beat the snot out of you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But missile, say an archer of some variety, is mm-hmm. pretty safe, and that's the way they deal with this. But your your warriors that are fighting in Malay with this thing, <laughs> uh, Orcus forbid if 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 your caster decides, yeah, let me see how this massive effect works, and it's it say the one that turns it into a force a force field, you know, force damage in the 30 foot radius while three of your party members are fighting it toe to toe. On the plus side snow. though, it can't do any more than 96. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> it's that's it. it maxes out. And then it's got the tentacles that are up or the the flails. So, so actually are, the real problem is when those high level spells get reflected back. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, cuz you're not generally always immune to the thing that you're casting as a spell cast. But if you're if you're and a uh, 17th level character, this is not going to be a problem for you. No, I guess. As well, long as you don't just slam it with a spell. That being <laughs> said, in our Spelljammer character game, you guys were 17th level characters. And, and there was multiples, and they were problematic. Uh, yeah, they, they definitely... I used them as a nuisance, right? right? One was, as catapult bullets, they hurt a lot. And the other thing was, once they cracked open and landed, they, I used their special ability, which has a recharge. Is basically They basically flashed light and can blind you. Yeah, well, they, they recharge is after a short or a long rest. So oh, yeah, like, no, I'm sorry. I thought yeah. it was a viral yeah. recharge, but no. Yeah, no. Um, but so once per combat. If you were doing it, you were cheating, basically. Well, no, like... Well, really, he had enough of them, it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing. The really nasty usage of this is if you have multiple flail snails involved in the encounter, and if you, if you can staccato their attacks so they're not activating the ability all at once they kind of do it in a sequence or whatever um then it's a light show yeah then you have if you have three of them two of them are beating the snot out of a good amount of the party and then this ability is like an effect for essentially six rounds of the combat so that's that's going to make even like a eighth level party is going to have a bad time with that well the other thing though is if if they do do it all at once, then it's a lot of saving throws that you have to pass. Yeah. So chances are, you know, you're going to fail the saving throw. The other thing is because the, if they're using that as their action, more than likely they're going to pull into their shell, which adds four to the armor class. So they're already impressive armor class of so 16. Right. Goes to a 20. You know, is that full plate or in a shield or is that better? 
uh, full, plate full plate and a shield. Full plate and a shield. Yeah, so essentially, you know, if they go into their shell, they're full plate and a shield. Since they can't attack on the same round as they do that, anyway, it would only make sense that whenever they're going to use their, what is it called? What's the ability? Scintillating called? shell. Their yeah. scintillating shell ability, they're going to pull into their shell, they're going to flash the light, try and blind everybody, and then... Yeah, a bonus and, action, they can pop out. So. Enemies in the full shell. Fluff's not power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's going to be nasty. They get the five attacks. I really like the way they flavor that if their the individual flail tentacles take... If like they take ten ten, more than ten yeah. points of damage from, a, from an attack, then that attack becomes inactive. So they have a ton of attacks out the gate, but the idea is you're going to quickly wear them down, them down if you deal respectable damage, and your average warrior is probably going to do more than 10 so, damage. So if you do nine or, nine or less the entire time, it's going to hurt more. <laughs> yeah. They're going to set their, their flails to womp. That's what's <laughs> going to happen. <laughs> well, and that was one of the other uses I used for them. While they weren't very threatening to the party, they were a freaking nightmare for the crew of the Star Sprite. You guys really, if you wanted to have any crew left, had to deal with them. Right. One way or another. These guys would be fun to use. Like I could definitely see one of the races trying to like capture them and use them. Domesticate them. Yeah. It, cause, let's face it. Like Once you figure out how they work, you know, don't use magic on them. And you need a pointy stick that's 15 foot long. Yeah, long pointy sticks. Yeah. So I have a couple ideas of things that I, I, I think we, we might be able to do with them, either with an interesting NPC or, or whatnot. I don't know. Are you thinking of racing flail snails? No. Oh. I was thinking, like, what happens if you had an, an NPC that really thought that the that the glass element could could be something special? So, what if it fed it magic items so that essentially its releasings would be magical in some some way, shape? And then we'll grind it up and try and sell it as some kind of cure all. So, you want to introduce magic poop into the game? Yes. Yeah, well, it's a creature. Excrement. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, it's excrement. excrement. It's, uh, it's a little different. But, I mean, so the idea, too, is you could, like, like dangling the carrot in front of the mule or whatever. You could do that with, like, gems or whatever kind of enough in front of it. Mm -hmm. And you could use this thing kind of as a siege monster. Like, oh, just send it into people's ranks, and then uh, it's going to attack. It's going to be impervious to all the, um, you know, all the magical attacks that they might use. And you kind of send these things as a ponderous front line to go just so chaos. Into into people's line and then attack with missile weapons over it. Well, yeah, each strike could probably like kill a peasant basically. So if there's if the army is not well trained on the other side, how big are they? They're just large, right? Uh, yeah. uh, yep, they like, are large. Yep. It might be fun to take like kobolds or goblins. I think kobolds work better just because of natural the, miners. Because they're natural miners and they're also more inclined to use magic. They're and, inventive and uh, they they revere magic, where some of the other more savage races kind of uh, are superstitious of it. Mm -hmm. Putting a hood, uh, what are they? Hodas? 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hodas yeah. on the back of the of the flask now for a small monster. Yeah, and then they could ride ride them. Basically, like you said, they'd be they they'd be little like basically bulwarks. I don't go very far fast, yeah. but. <laughs> Yeah, well, the, but the idea of um, siege weaponry it doesn't move very fast either. So, yeah, yeah. So one thing we did uh, mention in conversation earlier is the the fact that they don't have either a climb speed or a burrowing speed. Like just for a snail, kind of makes sense. So I would just give it to them. In fact, like snails have a sw would I would assume they would have a swim speed too. Like okay. I would I'd give them a, a uh, movement of. I either. would give I would give them a climb of five, and I wouldn't give them a burrow because they just eat through what's there. So they're not actually burrowing and getting into the earth they're just eating what's around them so yeah. if they want to travel down they that, just eat that, but it. that's like the um the carrying or what's the one that the ankeg the ankeg like that's how it burrows it's eats yeah like a worm through. yeah but i don't know like i would even a, a 10 move i would just give it a 10 move like it's so slow that like why not just give it to it <laughs> yeah. yeah it doesn't need to be any so slower. i would i would give it uh, the, the barrow climb and swim because like it's 10 feet around <laughs> or, or 20 feet i don't feet know if that it snails hustles. really uh, yeah. swim though i think they might just move along the bottom yeah i guess that's true they're not really yeah they, but yeah so the, the only reason i had brought up like well would they maybe need a, a, a burrow speed is because they're from the elemental plane of earth and right. most of those creatures have earth glide mm -hmm. but again maybe they would always choose not to earth glide because they wouldn't eat it they want yeah because they eat their way through yeah so you know maybe you know that that could be very well be why so how how do you use the flail snail in your game have you had any cool stories you want to share them it's a great section for that in the comments down below. While you're down there, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can find us over on nerdarchy.com. Hang out with us for funny memes over on Facebook. Come to patronize us in a good way over on Patreon. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.
terrible. I think this came from the Fiendom Folio. It was always a cool monster. Now, one of the things that they're doing with the, the Volos Guide, the monsters, they're taking these old nostalgia monsters that we had way back when, and they're actually improving the story and making the RP uh, elements to them way better than they actually originally were. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, I don't remember ever going up against a flail snail. I don't know if you used it back in the day against us or not. I don't have any memories of it. It's because I used them and then mine wiped the party. Uh, yeah, it's, it's the, the players, players not people. Then start flailing and snailing as the flail snail does. The flail snail is designed. It's got a trail of treasure as its, its RP thing. So there are people who have a career of just following the snails around because their goo that they leave behind hardens into a usable glass you know for for our world like we have the chaos storm hunters but like maybe when there's an off season or whatever they're also like basically they look for eldritch like paraphernalia maybe we make a background for that because that sounds really cool so it's like characters yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> so they were they made an appearance in the spell jammer game unknowns to us and we were looking at the gold value of what the shells are worth. We left a lot of fucking money on the table, guys. <laughs> About 30 grand. We are the yeah. worst mur murder hobos ever, is really what Yeah, so happens. basically I had a Kraken that collected uh, flower snails and shoved them into basically boulders mm. and, and had them like in a magical stasis and then would hurl them catapult style at the ship they would break open they would you know try and blind everybody on the ship and then start them yeah why haven't you what are you waiting for what you are gods you man. yeah down in the description below you can find a link to amazon so you can get it through our link and we would appreciate you helping us and i've also taken to like pinning it in the comment section so there's a pinned comment of where to get it to flouse now now this is another monster from original dungeons and dragons ad and d the wayback machine the wayback machine and it was probably in the fiendom folio a lot of the monsters that they're pu that they're putting into Volo's guide came from either the Fiendom Folio or, or Monster Manual 2. You know, like most things that are terrible. Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Nerdarchus Ryan, and today I'm joined by... Nerdarchus Dave. Nathan Nerdark. Nerdarchus Ted. And today we're talking about enemies in the full shell, flail snail power. Jump down the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter. It's a great way to learn how to game with Nerdarchy as well as get weekly tips. What page can we find the Flail Snail on? The Flail Snail in your trusty Volo's Guide to Monster is on page 144. And if you haven't picked up your 